Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Today we will continue um, our physics class. Um, the chapter is Maxwell equations and electromagnetic wave. Okay, there is a remainder of Gauss law for magnetic fields. We can see um, this is the field line of the magnetic field. Uh, so if we calculate the magnetic field in the Gaussian surface, like you, we can see in this one and the circle, the red circle, so we can calculate the the magnetic flux here. So this is also we can calculate the magnetic flux here and also another Gaussian surface like this one or this one. And to calculate the Gauss uh, the magnetic flux, the magnetic flux in Gaussian surface will be zero. So the magnetic flux is a close integral of B D E. Uh, so it is equal to zero. So this is the Gauss law for magnetic field. And if we have the magnet like this one, the long long magnet um, they have two pole north and south pole so if we break into small pieces like this one so it will be create another um, pole like north north and south pole and north and south pole here and also north and south pole here so the simple the simple magnetic structure that can exist is a magnetic dipole dipole it's mean that we have two pole in in the magnet in the permanent magnet and the magnetic monopole is don't exist as far as we know so if we have um, or we calculate the gas goes in in side of Gaussian surface like um, this equation because integral of BDS so we can calculate the the displacement current using the ampere Maxwell law um, we can see in this in this figure that this is the uniform magnetic fields B in a circular region. If we have the carrier like here, this is the point of the carrier. So it will be the magnetic field um, around the carrier will induce a uh, electric fields like this one. So this will be create a electric electric field. So electric fields will be uh, will move the so the carrier will be moved if we if the electric uh, field is exist in inside of the magnetic fields. So we can see that from Ampere Maxwell law that cos integral of BDS is equal to mu zero I D enclosed plus mu zero I enclosed. So then ID is equal to displacement displacement current. ID is epsilon zero. D flux magnetic uh, electric flux per dt, and the induced direction of the E electric uh, field opposite the induced of the B direction in the preceding figure. So this is the summary of the Maxwell equation. We have a uh, Gauss law for electric electricity. Uh, we discuss is later before the midterm test. A uh, cross integral E D E is equal to K and close per epsilon zero. So and the the relates rel net electric flux to net and close electric charge. And then for the Gauss law for magnetism, we uh, discuss in, in in previous class that a close integral of B D E is equal to zero. And then uh, this is the Faraday, Faraday's law that the electric field, um, the induce of electric field uh, because of the changing magnetic flux. So we can create the electric field due to uh, if we change the magnetic flux. So the cross integral of EDS is equal to minus D. Uh, flux magnetic flux per dt. This is the changing of the magnetic flux. So if we change the magnetic flux, we can create the electric field here. And then the last is Ampere Maxwell law. If the uh, closed integral of BD is BDS is equal to 
um, mu 0 epsilon 0 di uh, magnetic flux per dt plus eps, uh, mu 0 e enclosed so um, the induce of magnetic field due to the changing electric flux and the current so if we change the magnetic flux uh, induce the magnetic field we can create the electric flux and we can create the current so there is a uh, some electromagnetic spectrum and electromagnetic is uh, there is a two it consists of the electric field and magnetic field so this is the electromagnetic why why um, it is uh, electromagnetic because uh, it is electro and magnetic. Electro is mean that electric field and magnetic is mean that this is the magnetic field. So there is uh, some application in electromagnetic spectrum. We can see that from long wave, radio wave, infrared until the, the gamma rays. So we can see that for visible spectrum, we can see um, the color uh, lies in uh, 10 point minus 6 to 10 point minus 7 of, of wavelength and the frequency is around uh, 10 point 14 to 10 point 15 and then we can see from radio wave there is a um, many application uh, using the electromagnetic field in radio wave frequency from the maritime to the ma uh, and also the mobile radio to TV channel FM radio and so on so how to create the electri electromagnetic wave? We can see from this figure that we have the energy source then, and from the energy source, we use the LC oscillator to generate the electromagnetic uh, wave. So from the LC oscillator, we use the transformer to increase the magnitude of the electromagnetic wave. And then after we get the some specific magnitude of the electromagnetic field here, so this is uh, in this is the electromagnetic wave, electromagnetic wave here, and in some some specific uh, magnitude, and then we transmit using transmission line and the antenna, so we can uh, distribute the electromagnetic to uh, many to some specific area or another area and then we can use it uh, for the many applications like I uh, mentioned before uh, like uh, for to TV, radio, maritime, maritime and so on so this is how we can produce the electromagnetic fields the first we use the energy source and energy source is uh, sometimes this is the DC the DC is mean that there is no frequency in the energy source after we use the LC oscillator, we can create the electromagnetic wave and then we increasing the magnitude of electromagnetic wave using the transformer and then we transmit it using transmission line and antenna to another area. So the electromagnetic wave is consists of two elements. The first one is E, electric, uh, el electric field, and then the B is magnetic fields. The electric field is Em sin Kx minus omega t and the B is Bm sin Kx minus omega t. Em is ma uh, maximum magnitude of E and Bm also the maximum magnitude of the B. And then uh, this uh, an another constant is C is equal to 1 over square mu 0 epsilon 0. This is the wave speed. So if we illustrate the electromagnetic field like this one, this is the E the E component and this is the B component. We can see that this is the E component, the electric fields component, and then this is the magnetic fields component here. Okay, so uh, we can calculate it and then we can, uh, after, after we produce the electromagnetic field, we can get uh, some specific wavelengths of the uh, electromagnetic wave. And then, uh, what is the energy transport and the pointing factor? So if we transmit the electromagnetic field, uh, we have to, uh, yeah, we have to give the energy transport at the point. So this is the in 
how to calculate the instantaneous energy flow rate in electromagnetic fields. The first we can see that uh, using the pointing vector, the S uh, vector S is equal to 1 over mu 0 E cross B. And then how to calculate the magnitude of instantaneous energy flow rate, the S is equal to 1 over C mu 0 E quadrat. So this is the intensious energy flow rate in electromagnetic fields. And then uh, the energies emitted by the light of source S must pass through the sphere of radius R. So we can calculate the intensity of the electromagnetic wave. E I is equal to power per area. Power is PS and area is 4 V R square. So we can uh, calculate the the I or the intensity of the electromagnetic wave and then this is the polarization um, we know that the electromagnetic wave is cost consists of the E and B E is electric field and B is magnetic fields sometimes we want to uh, only use the elec uh, the electro elec electric fields or sometimes we only use the magnetic fields so we need a polarization here so this is the vertical polarized light. So it's like a filter. So after we put the 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 filter or polarization filter uh, in front of the electromagnetic wave like this one, so we can spare it the electric the E and B or electric field and magnetic fields. So we can see that from the vertical like this one. So only the E will pass the filter and the B will be, uh, they, they cannot pass the polarization device like this one. Okay, and uh, we can see that from another perspective, this is the unpolarized light. Uh, they have two uh, component, like the E and this is the B. So we have the polarizing seat like this one, this is the vertical, so only the vertical polarized light will uh, through the, this device. Okay, so this is the polarization and another is polar reflection and ref refractions. Um, for the reflections, we have the incident light ray, so this is the angle of incidence. incidence is equal to angle of reflection of that or theta i is equal to theta r and then um, so in another in perspective we can see like this one so in the angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflections to the normal to surface and then we have two reflection the first one is specular reflections specular this is the specular reflection and this is the diffuse reflections for the diffuse reflection, as at both position, see the reflected light because of the yeah the surface is uh, is like this one. Um, and then for the specular reflection, the uh, the surface is flat like this one. So, and in this eyes, uh, it will be see the light. But here, this eyes doesn't see the light. So this is the specular reflection and diffuse reflections. And if we have two mirror like this one, so we can uh, make a double reflection. So this is the first one. This is the incidence, uh, the angle, the first one. And then it will be reflect to another mirror. So the theta i here is equal to theta r here. And then after in second mirror, so it will be tra uh, reflected to another side. So this one, theta i here is equal to theta r here. So this is the double reflection by M1 and M2. And we can see that uh, if we put the light from the air to water like this one, so it will be like we have two, this reflected ray and also reflected ray like this one. So um, the reflections or theta accent, theta one accent is equal to theta theta one. And for reflection, we can calculate by using the index bias. So N2 sin theta 2 is equal to N1 sin theta 1. And then the N is equal to C per V. Okay, it's like this one. So this is the N1 and here is N2 and this is also N1. 
So sin theta 2 here is equal to n1 per n2 sin theta 1. Or um, this is from n1 sin theta 1 is equal to n2 sin theta 2. It's like in, 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 previous, in previous slides. So from this uh, mathematical, we can get these equations. And then sin theta 3 is equal to sin theta e here is equal to n2 per n1 sin theta 2. So sin theta 3 is equal to um, n2 per n1 dot n1 per n2 sin theta 1. So here we can replace sin theta 2 by using this equation. So we put here. So the, we can erase this one. So sin theta 3 is equal to sin theta 1. And here we can calculate the d here. The d is here. X is equal to h per cosinus theta 2. And then d is equal to x in alpha. And alpha is theta 1 minus theta 2. And then we can calculate that d is equal to h per cosinus theta 2 sin theta 1 min, min, minus theta 2. And then this is some uh, index of refraction from vacuum exactly 1, air, water, acetone, until diamond. The index refraction is 2.42. So uh, if we know the index of refraction, we can calculate the, in the incident angle and also refraction, uh, reflection angle if the light is coming to this material. So this is the reflection ref refraction if the index is met like this one. So from air to air, so there is no direction change. And then if the next index is greater, it's like from air to water. So the ray is bent toward to the normal. So this one, bent to, this is the normal. So it's bent to the normal. But if the next index is less, for like a, from water to the air, so the ray is bent away from the normal. So it's like this one. So this is the reflection and the refraction. And then another is chromatic dispersion. So if we have the white light, incident white light here to the glass, so it will be after the light coming to the glass, it will be um, generate the chromatic dispersion. So we can uh, see another color is like here. Uh, red, red and the blue blue line and then the blue is always bent more than red, red because that wavelength is different between the blue and right, red so it's, if we, it's like we're using the prism so here this is the chromatic dispersion um, the first we use the white light here and then after the glass we can generate the uh, the, the chromatic dispersion and like um, uh, like a rainbow okay so we can calculate the reflection and index of the prism theta 2 is equal to uh, theta per 2 and this is the theta 2 then here is uh, theta and then theta 1 is equal to theta 2 plus alpha this is the theta 1 and then this is theta 2 and this is the alpha equal to tau per 2 plus tau min per 2 and then sin theta 1 is equal to n sin theta 2. So we can use this equation theta 1 replaced by using this one. So we can get sin theta plus tau min per 2 is equal to n sin tau per 2. So the n is equal to sin tau per tau min per 2 per sin tau per 2. And then um, the tau is equal to theta 1 plus theta 4 minus alpha. So if we have the theta 1, the in the, the incident angle, and then theta 4 is reflection angle, and also on the alpha, the angle of the prism, we can calculate the tau here. And then this is the total internal reflections. Uh, we have the critical angle, it's like this one. This is the critical angle, theta, theta c here. So if uh, it's like the light coming from the inside of the water, if the angle is critical angle so it will be not reflected or not refract refracted but it's like this one so it's coming from here and then go to the horizontal ion surface so uh, theta c is equal to arcus sin theta n2 per n1 
and then if the next index is lower and the incident angle is large enough and then the light can be trapped inside so this is the critical angle and then another is a Brewster angle if we have the incident light like this one the incident unpolarized ray and then it's coming to the glass with the Brewster angle this is the Brewster angle theta b so it will be refracted ray we have refracted ray here and also reflected ray refracted ray and reflected ray and refracted ray is unpolarized ray but reflected ray is polarized ray this is polarized ray because it's only one direction so the uh, Brewster angle is arcastan and 2 per n1 okay so this is the all of this uh, chapter um, see you in another chapter. Bye-bye.